You have now learned how the human microbiota can influence the health and disease of humans. That, of course, is very interesting, but is it actually being used in the treatment of patients? Well, it actually is. I have therefore arranged for an interview with a brilliant young doctor at the gastrointestinal department at Aarhus University Hospital. Let's pay him a visit and see what he has to say. Okay, so I'm sitting here with uh, Dr. Christian uh, Lundberg Vass, who is a doctor here at the gastrointestinal department at yeah. Aarhus uh, University Hospital. And Christian, uh, you uh, use replacement of gut microbiota order yes. as a treatment. Yeah. Could you try to elaborate a little bit about what kind of patients do you do that on? Are there any side effects? What are your experiments as to whether it works or it doesn't work? Mm. Yes, uh, I work as a gastroenterologist uh, with patients with uh, inflammatory diseases in the gut. Uh, that's mostly chronic diseases, but we also have acute diseases, which could be uh, Clostridium difficile, uh, a very uh, virulent bacteria which overgrows the other bacteria in the gut and induces an imbalance, which is which is dangerous for the patient. It's usually coming after antibiotic treatment, it's the com most common cause of antibiotic-related diarrhea. So it's a quite common and increasing problem in the Western world. Um, and there you could use the principle of, of replacing the gut flora with the healthy flora from a patient without any disease. It's actually an old principle which has been used for hundreds of years and it's been sort of reinvented in the in the modern era where we have increasing antibiotic resistance and increasing hospital acquired infections um, and in general an increased burden of, of uh, virulent bacteria uh, that could be clostridial disease which is an, a very typical example of, a, of, a, of, an, of an infection which is related to increased use of antibiotics. It's also the case with uh, staphylococci which are resistant to most common antibiotics. So, so we use it now for treatment of relapsing infection with clostridial bacteria. Okay, so, so if I understand you correctly, you have patients with some sort of condition that requires treatment with antibiotics. Yes. So that knocks out most of their normal flora. Yes. But what grows up quickly could, in some cases, be clostridium difficile, yes. which gives diarrhea, and then you you cannot knock you can knock it down again. But mm -hmm. as long as soon as the antibiotics take off, then again it will be the clostridium yes. that grows up. Yes. Okay. And there you have the case with relapsing cross clostridial infection, and this could actually arise in a in an otherwise healthy person who has penicillin for a simple pneumonia or urinary tract infection and where you by some by chance sometimes but also if they have some chronic disease um, on beforehand but in some in some cases it just happens out of the blue that they have this clostridial overgrowth in in the gut after penicillin treatment and in some of these patients the the infection just relapses again and again and they acquire a chronic infection which is very difficult to treat and which ultimately threatens them on their life. Okay, so, so I have a patient and you've decided to try and use this replacement of yes. the microbiota. What do you do then? Yes, um, uh, patients usually, well, as a healthy person you can actually feel disgust about having feces poured into you but most patients are willing to accept any kind of treatment and feel that this is somehow a natural treatment or something which is not appalling to them. So, so what we do is talk to the patient about the principle of having feces from a healthy person um, uh, put into the colon, it's put into the, to the large intestine. Um, and then we select uh, an appropriate donor who donates feces and the feces is uh, prepared, prepared in the laboratory for infusion via a tube. Uh, we use colonoscopy, which is an endoscopy, 
examining the large bowel and through the colons colonoscope we infuse uh, the solution. It's, it's being resolved in, in, in saline, so it's a liquid. How, how do you determine if a uh, donor is appropriate? Yeah, that's a very good question because we want to make sure that we don't transmit infectious diseases and that the recipient doesn't get sick from the donation. And we know that the gut microbiota is very complex. It houses thousands of different species of bacteria of which we can only culture a very small amount. So it's a large, it's a large um, number of unknown bacteria that we use and potentially some of them will cause problems. Uh, but So we, we select a healthy donor, we screen for common and known infectious diseases that would be hepatitis, HIV, uh, parasitic diseases, clostridial diseases of course and uh, we make sure that the donor hasn't received antibiotics, doesn't have any chronic disease, doesn't have obesity. We know now that fecal transplantation may be efficacious in obesity and type 2 diabetes so there's a growing interest in the area but so we and and then we preferably we use a related donor that could be the spouse or a daughter or a father or mother of the patient we have a young girl who is 20 years old and she had donation from her mother and she got well afterwards so we usually use a related donor so so what are you feeling about the how successful is this treatment yeah internationally uh, the success rate is 90 percent uh, 80 percent after the first treatment and in the 20 percent who have a relapse they have a 50 percent success rate so in total after two or three months 90 percent of the patients are cured and most relapses they occur in the first month mm -hmm. after, after treatment so we know that if they are relapse free after three months, the, the effect is lasting. And our experience is we have treated 12 patients uh, this year. They are very similar. If you have a clear cut antibiotic related clostridial overgrowth, which is relapsing, the cure rate is about between 70 and 90 percent. That's very impressive. I mean, yeah. do, does the thesis, does that have to be fresh? I mean, yeah. could you imagine? The establishment of a, like a feces bank, like yes, a blood bank? Definitely, yes. There have been published protocols to, to conserve feces, donor feces, uh, to freeze it at minus 80 degrees. And in the US, that's the most common method now. They have launched a national uh, service of providing donor screened feces. Um, um, we use fresh feces, which is logistically quite cumbersome. It's difficult to force a patient to deliver fresh stools before 9 a.m. In, in, in time to prepare for colonoscopy later the same day. It would be much easier if we could have a, a bottle in the freezer to just thaw and, and give on the day which is pre-screened. So, so I think the future will be to have a, to have a bank, a feces bank. That sounds very interesting. So all in all, you treat patients very successfully mm -hmm. in these uh, antibiotic-induced diarrheas. Yes. Um, so you mentioned type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. and obesity. Do you feel that overall this will be a field that will expand in the next decade? Yes, there will be a lot of research in, about in, in which donors are appropriate. There's been a lot of work on different enterotypes. We differ as persons in the families of bacteria we host in the gut. So some persons may be better donors than others. And uh, I think there will be a lot of research and expansion of the method within inflammatory bowel diseases, that would be ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, in other types of auto-inflammatory diseases that could be rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, uh, but also in these metabolic diseases where the metabolic disturbances in type 2 diabetes and obesity may be directly related to the gut bacteria that we have. And, and it's, it may be a question of 
which is cause and which is effect, uh, and uh, experimental studies certainly support that by changing the gut microbiota we can induce sustained weight loss in obese patients. Sounds very interesting. Thank you a lot for uh, giving us your time for this interview. You're welcome. So good. Yes,